Syrian Jews derive their origin from two groups, those who inhabited Syria from early times and the Sephardim who fled to Syria after the expulsion of the Jews from Spain 1492 AD. There were large communities in Aleppo, Damascus, and Kamishli for centuries. In the early 20th century, a large percentage of Syrian Jews immigrated to Israel, the U.S., and Latin America. The largest Syrian Jewish community is located in Israel and is estimated at 80,000. Following the Syrian civil war and rise of ISIL, the majority of the remaining Jews of Syria have fled to neighboring Israel. In November 2015, it was reported that only 18 Syrian Jews remain in the entire country. <laughs> Second Temple period the tradition of the community ascribes its founding to the time of King David 1000 BC, whose general Joab occupied the area of Syria described in the Bible as Aram Zoba. This name is taken by later tradition as referring to Aleppo. Modern scholarship locates Aram Zoba in Lebanon and the far south of Syria. The identification with Aleppo is not found in rabbinic literature prior to the 11th century. Whether or not Jewish settlement goes back to a time as early as King David, both Aleppo and Damascus certainly had Jewish communities early in the Christian era. Topic: <laughs> Post Second Temple. Topic: in Roman times, about 10,000 Jews lived in Damascus, governed by an ethnarch. Paul of Tarsus succeeded, after a first rebuff, in converting many of the Jews of Damascus to Christianity 49 AD. This irritated the Jewish ethnarch to such a degree that he attempted to arrest Paul. The latter's friends only saved his life by lowering him in a basket out of a window built into the wall of the city. Many Jews were murdered by the pagan inhabitants upon the outbreak of the First Jewish-Roman War. Later, Damascus, as the coins show, obtained the title of metropolis, and under Alexander Severus, when the city was a Christian colony, it became the seat of a bishop, who enjoyed a rank next to that of the Patriarch of Antioch. In the 5th century, under the rule of the Byzantine Empire, being the Talmudic time, Jews were living at Damascus for the rabbi Raphram Bar Papa went to pray in the synagogue of Jobar. An early Jewish community is likely to have existed in Aleppo during the 5th century, when a synagogue was constructed there. Also in the 5th century, Jerome reports the presence in Baroea Aleppo of a congregation of Nazarenes Jewish Christians using a Hebrew gospel similar to that of Matthew. During the conflicts between the Byzantines and the Persians, Damascus frequently suffered heavily. When Syria was conquered by the Persians 614, the Jews of Damascus, profiting by the presence of the invaders, joined with their coreligionists of Palestine to take vengeance on the Christians, especially those of Tyre. In 635, Damascus fell into the hands of the Muslims. The inhabitants voluntarily surrendered and succeeded in saving 15 Christian churches. <laughs> After the Islamic conquest Damascus <laughs> 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 The rule of the Umayyads brought a new period of splendor to the city, which now became the capital of that caliphate. This period terminated with the advent of the Abbasids, and the city suffered during the following centuries from continuous wars. The Jewish community continued, and certainly existed in 970. For, says a historian, Joseph ben Abadur of Cordoba, having lost all hope of becoming the chief rabbi of that city, went to Palestine in that year, and settled at Damascus. Fortunately for the Jews, it resisted the siege of the Second Crusade 1147. Some time afterward a large number of Palestinian Jews sought refuge at Damascus from the enormous taxes imposed upon them by the Crusaders, thus increasing the community. Little information exists concerning the Jews in Damascus during the following centuries. The few data are given by travelers who visited the place. In 1128 Abraham ibn Ezra visited Damascus though compare the note of Harkavi, according to Edelman, Judah ha-Levi composed his famous poem on Zion in this city, but Harkavi has shown that Ash-Sham here designates Palestine and not Damascus. In 1267 Namanides visited Damascus and succeeded in leading a Jewish colony to Jerusalem. Benjamin of Tadella visited Damascus in 1170, while it was in the hands of the Seljukian prince Nur ad-Din Zangi. 
He found there 3,000 Rabbinite Jews and 200 Karaites. Jewish studies flourished there much more than in Palestine. According to Bakker, it is possible that during the 12th century the seat of the Palestinian Academy was transferred to the city. The principal rabbis of the city were Rabbi Ezra and his brother Sar Shalom, President of the Tribunal, Yusa I Hamsi, R. Matzla I H, R. Mayer, Yusa Ibn Piat, R. Heman, the Parnas, and R. Sadiq, physician. About the same time, Pita I Haya of Regensburg was there. He found about 10,000 Jews, who have a prince. The head of their academy is Rabbi Ezra, who is full of the knowledge of the law, for Rabbi Samuel, the head of the Academy of Babylon, ordained him." It was a Damascus rabbi, Judah ben Josiah, who, toward the end of the 12th century, was Najid in Egypt. At a later period another Najid, David ben Joshua, also came from Damascus. In 1210 a French Jew, Samuel ben Simpson, visited the city. He speaks of the beautiful synagogue situated outside the city Jobar and said to have been constructed by Elisha. Under Saladin the city again enjoyed considerable importance, but upon his death the disturbances began anew, until in 1516 the city fell into the hands of the Turks, since which time it has declined to the rank of a provincial town. It seems probable that Yehuda al-Harizi also visited Damascus during the first decade of the 13th century. At least he mentions the city in the celebrated 46th. Makama. Toward the end of the 13th century Jesse ben Hezekiah, a man full of energy, arose in Damascus. He was recognized by Sultan Kalawan of Egypt as prince and exilarch, and in 1289 and in June 1290, in conjunction with his twelve colleagues, he put the anti-Maimonists under the ban. The letters of the rabbis of Damascus and of Acre have been collected in the Min I Hat Kano, a compilation made by Abba Mari, grandson of Don Astruk of Lunel. No data are available for the 14th century. A story far I high contents himself with the mere mention of Damascene Jews journeying to Jerusalem. A manuscript of David Kimi on Ezekiel was written by Nathan of Narbonne and collated with the original by Rihiyya in Damascus, A flat 18, 1375. The Jewish community of Damascus continued its existence under the sultans Burjits and Mamluks of Egypt, who conquered Syria, for the Jewish refugees of Spain established themselves among their coreligionists in that city in 1492, constructing a synagogue which they called Kataib. The anonymous author of the Yi Hus Ha Abbot also speaks of the beauties of Damascus, and of the synagogue at Jobar, half of which was constructed by Elisha, half by Eliezer ben Iraq. Elijah of Ferrara 1438 had come to Jerusalem and had a certain jurisdiction in rabbinical matters over Damascus as well. He speaks of a great plague which devastated Egypt, Syria, and Jerusalem, but he does not say in how far the Jews of the first named city suffered. Mina I Hem I Hayam of Volterra visited Damascus in 1481, and found 450 Jewish families, all rich, honored, and merchants. The head of the community was a certain R. Joseph, a physician. Obadiah of Bertinoro 1488 speaks in one of his letters of the riches of the Jews in Damascus, of the beautiful houses and gardens. A few years later, 1495, an anonymous traveler speaks in like eulogistic terms. He lived with a certain Moses Macron, and he relates that the Damascene Jews dealt in dress goods or engaged in some handicraft. They lent money to the Venetians at 24% interest. Topic. Aleppo Topic. Maimonides, in his letter to the rabbis of Lunel, speaks of Aleppo as being the only community in Syria where some Torah learning survived, though the effort devoted to it was in his opinion less than impressive. Benjamin of Tadella visited Aleppo in 1173, when he found a Jewish community of 1,500 or on another reading 5,000 souls with three noteworthy rabbis attending to their spiritual needs, Moses Alconstantini, Israel, and Seth. Pita I Haya of Regensburg was there between 1170 and 1180, and Al I Harizi 50 years later. The former calls the citadel the palace of King Nor ed Din, and says that there were 1,500 Jews in Aleppo, of whom the chief men were rabbis Moses Al Constantini, Israel, and Seth. Yehuda Al Harizi, author of the Ta I H Kimani, has much to say in praise of the Aleppo Jews. In 1195 the leading Jew was Joseph ben Judah, who had migrated from the Maghreb by way of Egypt, where he was the friend of Maimonides, who wrote for him the guide for the perplexed. 
Other men of learning were Azariah and his brother Samuel Nisim, the king's physician Eleazar, Jeshua, Jachin Ananiah, and Joseph ben Ihiste. Although he respected them far more than their Damascene counterparts, Alharizi thought little of the Aleppo poets, of whom he mentions Moses Daniel and a certain Joseph. The best was Joseph ben Sima, who had good qualities but wrote bad verse. Their piety must have been extreme, for Eleazar is held up to scorn for having travelled on the Sabbath, although at the Sultan's command. Alharizi died in Aleppo and was buried there. In 1260 the Mongols conquered Aleppo, and massacred many of the inhabitants, but many of the Jews took refuge in the synagogue and were saved. In 1401 the Jewish quarter was pillaged, with the rest of the city, by Tamerlane, and a Jewish saint died there after a fast of seven months. Topic. Arrival of Spanish Jews in Syria Topic. After the expulsion of the Jews from Spain in 1492, Sephardi Jews settled in many of the Islamic countries bordering the Mediterranean, including Syria, which then formed part of the Mameluk Sultanate of Egypt. For the most part they founded their own communities, but they often assumed positions of rabbinic and communal leadership in their new homes. A social distinction remained between the newly arrived Sephardim and the native communities, which took several decades to accept them. Aleppo Jews of Spanish descent have a special custom, not found elsewhere, of lighting an extra candle at Hanukkah. It is said that this custom was established in gratitude for their acceptance by the local community. In both Aleppo and Damascus, the two communities supported a common chief rabbinate. Chief rabbis were usually but not always from Spanish descended families. In Aleppo, there were five in a row from the Laniato family. The Sephardic presence was greater in Aleppo than in Damascus, which maintained closer ties to the Holy Land. In particular, the Damascus community was strongly influenced by the Safed Kabbalistic school of Isaac Luria, and contributed several notable personalities, including I Chaim Vital and Israel Nahara. This explains certain differences in customs between the two cities. Captain Domingo de Toral, who visited Aleppo in 1634, mentions over 800 houses of Jews who spoke Castilian. An anonymous Jewish traveler who arrived a few years after the Spanish immigration, found at Damascus 500 Jewish households, also a Karaiti community whose members called themselves Muallim Sadaka, and a more important Rabbinite community, composed of three groups and possessing three beautiful synagogues. One of these belonged to the Sephardim, another, to the Moriscos Moorish Jews or natives, and the third, to the Sicilians. In each synagogue there was a preacher, who read the works of Maimonides to the pious every day after the prayer. The preacher of the Sephardim was Azai Haq Masad, that of the natives Shem I Tob al Farani, and that of the Sicilians Isaac I Haber. There were also two small schools for young students of the Talmud, containing respectively 30 and 40 pupils. Sixty Jewish families were living in the village of Jobar, 1.6 kilometers (0.99 miles) from Damascus, who had a very beautiful synagogue. I have never seen anything like it, says the author. It is supported by 13 columns. Tradition says that it dates from the time of the prophet Elisha, and that he here anointed King Hazal. R. Eliezer ben Arak, a Tanite of the first century, repaired this synagogue. In order to indicate, finally, that the city was even then under the Ottoman rule, the narrator adds that the people of Damascus had just received a governor, Naib, from Constantinople. Topic. Under the Ottoman Empire Topic. In 1515 Selim I defeated the Mamluks and Syria became part of the Ottoman Empire. The Chronicle of Joseph Sambari finished 1672 contains the names of a number of rabbis of note who lived in Damascus during the 16th century. He says that the Jewish community lived chiefly in Jobar, and he knows of the synagogue of Elisha central synagogue of Aleppo and the cave of Elijah the Tishbite. At the head of the community was a certain Abu I Hatsara so called from a peculiar kind of headdress which he wore, who was followed by Abid Allah ibn Na I Sir. Of the rabbis of Damascus proper he mentions Joseph I. Hayat, Samuel Arapal, author of Mizmor le Tada, Samuel ibn Imran, Joseph al i Sa'i i h, Moses Nahara, author of Lekha i h i t o b, i Hayam al Shaich, Joseph Ma i Talan, Abraham Galanti. 
In this home of learning there was also a model codex of the Bible called Al Taj, the crown. In 1547 Pierre Bellin visited Damascus in the train of the French ambassador M. de Fumel. He speaks of the large number of Jews there, but makes the singular confusion of placing in this city the events connected with the famous Ahmad Shaitan of Egypt. Among the spiritual leaders of Damascus in the 16th century may be mentioned, Jacob Barab, who, in the interval between his sojourns in Egypt and at Safed, lived there for some years c. 1534, I Chaim Vital the Calabrian 1526 for many years chief rabbi of Damascus, and the author of various Kabbalistic works, including Etzi Hayam, Samuel ben David the Karaiti, not Gemsel, as Eliakim Carmoli has it, who visited Damascus in 1641, mentions the circumstance that the Karaites there do not read the Haftarah after the Pentateuch section. Moses Nahara, his son, the poet Israel Nahara, Moses Galanti, died in 1608, the son of Mordecai Galanti, and Samuel Laniado ben Abraham of Aleppo were also among the prominent men of the 16th century. The most celebrated rabbis of the 17th century were Josiah Pinto, a pupil of Jacob Abulafia, an author of the Kesef Nib i Har, and his son in law, Samuel Vital, who transcribed and circulated a large number of his father's Kabbalistic manuscripts. At the same time, in Aleppo i Chaim Cohen ben Abraham wrote, Mekor i Chaim, published at Constantinople in 1649, and at Amsterdam by Manasseh ben Israel in 1650. Other Aleppo worthies are Samuel Dweck and Isaac Lopez in 1690 followed by Yehuda Kassin, Isaac Baraka and Isaac Ati in the 18th century. From the 17th to the 19th century, several Jews of Spanish and Italian origin settled in Syria for trading reasons. Whenever possible, they kept their European nationality in order to be under the jurisdiction of the consular courts under the Ottoman capitulations, rather than being treated as dhimmis under Islamic law. These European Jews were known as Senores Francos and maintained a sense of social superiority to the native Jews, both Mastarabi and Sephardi. They did not form separate synagogues, but often held services of their own in private houses. There were also Jews of Baghdadi origin who claimed British nationality through family connections in India. Some information is obtainable from travelers who visited Damascus during the 19th century. Alfred von Kramer, in Middle Syrian und Damascus, 1853, states that in the municipal government of the city two Christians and one Jew had places, the number of Jews was 4,000, only 1,000 of whom, however, paid the poll tax. The last Karaiti had died there some 50 years previously, the Karaiti synagogue being then sold to the Greeks, who turned it into a church. The traveler Benjamin II gives the same number of inhabitants. He describes the synagogue at Jobar to the northeast of the city thus. The structure of this ancient building reminds one of the mosque Moawiya. The interior is supported by thirteen marble pillars, six on the right and seven on the left side, and is everywhere inlaid with marble. There is only one portal by which to enter. Under the holy shrine, is a grotto, the descent to which is by a flight of about twenty steps. According to the Jews, the prophet Elisha is said to have found in this grotto a place of refuge. At the entrance of the synagogue, toward the middle of the wall to the right, is an irregularly formed stone, on which can be observed the traces of several steps. Tradition asserts that upon this step sat King Hazal when the prophet Elisha anointed him king. Benjamin II also speaks of valuable copies of parts of the Bible to be found in Damascus, though the dates he gives 581 and 989 are unreliable. Neubauer mentions a copy of the Bible which belonged to Elisha ben Abraham ben Benvenisti, called Crescas, and which was finished in 1382. Damascus had eight chief rabbis during the 19th century, namely, 1 Joseph David Abulafia, 1809-16, 2 Jacob Antibi, 1816-1833, 3 Jacob Perez, 1833-48, 4 Aaron Baghdadi, 1848-66. During the next two years, the office of chief rabbi was vacant, owing to internal quarrels. 5 I Chaim Qim I Chai of Constantinople, 1868-72. 6 Mercado Kil I High of Nish 1872-76, 7 Isaac ben Moses Abulafia 1876-88, 8 Solomon Eliezer Alfandari, commonly called Mercado Alfandari, 
of Constantinople, who was appointed by an imperial decree in 1888 still in office in 1901. A more recent chief rabbi was Nisim Indibo, who died at the end of 1972. Other Damascus rabbis are Mordecai Maslatan, Shal Menaged and Zaki Asa. During the 19th century the Jews of Damascus were several times made the victims of calumnies, the gravest being those of 1840 and 1860, in the reign of the Sultan Abdulmachi I. That of 1840, commonly known as the Damascus Affair, was an accusation of ritual murder brought against the Jews in connection with the death of Father Thomas. The libel resulted in the arrest and torture of senior members of the Jewish community, as well as the kidnapping of 63 children ages 3 to 10 in an attempt to coerce a confession from their parents. The second accusation brought against the Jews, in 1860, was that of having taken part in the massacre of the Christians by the Druze and the Muslims. 500 Muslims, who had been involved in the affair, were hanged by the Grand Vizier Fuad Pasha. 200 Jews were awaiting the same fate, in spite of their innocence, and the whole Jewish community had been fined 4 million piastres. The condemned Jews were saved only by the official intervention of Fuad Pasha himself, that of the Prussian consul, Dr. Johann G. Wettstein, of Sir Moses Montefiore of London, and of the bankers Abraham Solomon Camundo of Constantinople and Shemaya Angel of Damascus. From that time to the end of the 19th century, several further blood accusations were brought against the Jews, these, however, never provoked any great excitement. Prominent Aleppo rabbis include Eliyahu Shama, Abraham Antibi and Mordecai Labadan in the 19th century, Jacob Saul Dweck who died in 1919, followed by Ezra Hamwi and Moses Mizrahi who was prepared to be burnt with the Torah scrolls but was removed by the Arab mob from the Jamilia synagogue during the pogrom of 1947. He was followed by Moses Tawil, Shlomo Zafrani and Yamtab Yedid. In the 19th century, the commercial importance of Aleppo and Damascus underwent a marked decline. Beginning around 1850, and with increasing frequency until the First World War, many families left Syria for Egypt, and later moved from there to Manchester in England, often following the cotton trade. Later still a considerable number left Manchester for Latin America, in particular Mexico and Argentina. Jews continued to emigrate from Syria into the early 20th century. From around 1908, many Syrian Jews migrated to New York City, where the Brooklyn community is now the world's largest single Syrian Jewish community. For these communities at the present day, see Syrian Jews. Topic. French Mandate and Independence Era Topic. With anti-Jewish feeling reaching a climax in the late 1930s and early 1940s, many Jews considered emigrating. Between 1942 and 1947, around 4,500 Jews arrived in Palestine from Syria and Lebanon. On the 17th of April 1946, Syria became independent from France. After independence, the Syrian government banned Jewish immigration to Palestine, and those caught trying to leave faced the death penalty or imprisonment with hard labor. Severe restrictions were also placed on the teaching of Hebrew in Jewish schools. In 1947, there were 15,000 Jews in Syria. On November 29, 1947, the United Nations approved a partition plan for Palestine, which included independent Jewish state. Pogroms subsequently broke out in Damascus and Aleppo. The December 1947 pogrom in Aleppo in particular left the community devastated, 75 Jews were killed, hundreds were injured, and more than 200 Jewish homes, shops, and synagogues were destroyed. Thousands of Syrian Jews illegally immigrated to Palestine as a result. In August 1949, the Menarsha synagogue in Damascus suffered a grenade attack, killing 12 people and injuring dozens. Topic. Post Topic. In 1948, Israel was created as a Jewish state and defeated an Arab coalition that involved Syria during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. During that war, the Syrian army invaded the Galilee, but its advance was stopped, and the Syrians were pushed back to the Golan Heights. Despite an exodus to Israel or other countries of Jews that occurred throughout the Muslim world, Syrian Jews were not officially expelled. But after Israeli independence in 1948, the situation for Syrian Jews deteriorated once again. The Aleppo Arab riot of 1947 killed dozens of Jews and destroyed hundreds of homes, shops, and shuls. 
This marked the beginning of mass Jewish emigration from Syria to Israel, despite the Syrian government's willingness to put to death those who attempted to flee. Other repressive measures against Jews included barring them from government service, not allowing them to own telephones or driver's licenses, and forbidding them to buy property. The anti-Semitic attitude of Syria's government was displayed to the world when it provided shelter for Nazi war criminal Alois Brunner, an aide to Adolf Eichmann. Initially, Lebanon allowed Syrian Jews escaping to Israel free passage through its territory. This ended when the Syrian government began confiscating the passports of Jews, and Lebanon announced that it could not allow persons through its borders without travel documents. Between 1948 and 1961, about 5,000 Syrian Jews managed to reach Israel. Many Syrian Jews also immigrated to Lebanon, but a few were deported back to Syria upon the Syrian government's request. The Syrian Jews in Lebanon, along with the rest of the Lebanese Jewish community, would largely leave that country for Israel, Europe, and the Americas in later years. The Syrian government passed a number of restrictive laws against the Jewish minority. In 1948, the government banned the sale of Jewish property. In 1953, all Jewish bank accounts were frozen. Jewish property was confiscated, and Jewish homes which had been taken from their owners were used to house Palestinian refugees. In March 1964, a new decree banned Jews from traveling more than five kilometers three miles from their hometowns. Jews were not allowed to work for the government or banks, could not acquire drivers' licenses, and were banned from purchasing property. Although Jews were prohibited from leaving the country, they were sometimes allowed to travel abroad for commercial or medical reasons. Any Jew granted clearance to leave the country had to leave behind a bond of $300 to $1,000 and family members to be used as hostages to ensure they returned. An airport road was paved over the Jewish cemetery in Damascus, and Jewish schools were closed and handed over to Muslims. The Jewish quarter of Damascus was under constant surveillance by the secret police, who were present at synagogue services, weddings, bar mitzvahs, and other Jewish gatherings. The secret police closely monitored contact between Syrian Jews and foreigners and kept a file on every member of the Jewish community. Jews also had their phones tapped and their mail read by the secret police, after Israel. S victory in the 1967 Six-Day War, restrictions were further tightened, and 57 Jews in Kamishli may have been killed in a pogrom. The communities of Damascus, Aleppo, and Kamishli were under house arrest for eight months following the war. Many Jewish workers were laid off following the Six-Day War. In 1954, the Syrian government temporarily lifted the ban on Jewish emigration, Jews who left had to leave all their property to the government. After the first group of Jewish emigrants left for Turkey in November 1954, emigration was swiftly banned again. In 1958, when Syria joined the United Arab Republic, Jewish emigration was temporarily permitted again, again on condition that those leaving relinquish all their property, but it was soon prohibited again. In 1959, people accused of helping Jews escape Syria were brought to trial. As a result, Syrian Jews began escaping clandestinely, and supporters abroad helped smuggle Jews out of Syria. Syrian Jews already living abroad often bribed officials to help Jews escape. Judy Feld Carr, a Canadian Jewish activist, helped smuggle 3,228 Jews out of Syria to Israel, the United States, Canada, and Latin America. Carr recalled that Syrian Jewish parents were desperate to get their children out of the country. Those who were caught attempting to escape faced execution or forced labor. If an escape was successful, family members could be imprisoned and stripped of their property. Often with the help of smugglers, escapees attempted to sneak across the border into Lebanon or Turkey, where they were met and assisted by undercover Israeli agents or local Jewish communities. Most escapees were young and single men. Many single men decided to put off marriage until they escaped, as they wanted to raise their children in freedom. As a result, the ratio of single men and women became heavily imbalanced, and Syrian Jewish women were often unable to find husbands. In 1977, Syrian President Hafez al-Assad, as a gesture to U.S. President Jimmy Carter, began allowing limited numbers of young women to leave the country, and some 300 left in total under this program. In 1974, four Jewish girls were raped, murdered and mutilated after attempting to flee to Israel. 
Their bodies were discovered by border police in a cave in the Zabdani Mountains northwest of Damascus along with the remains of two Jewish boys, Natan Shea 18 and Qasim Abadi 20, victims of an earlier massacre. Syrian authorities deposited the bodies of all six in sacks before the homes of their parents in the Jewish ghetto in Damascus. In 1970, the Israeli government began receiving intelligence of the situation Jews faced in Syria, and the efforts of many Jewish youths to flee in spite of the danger. That year, Israel launched Operation Blanket, a series of individual attempts to bring Jews to Israel, during which Israeli naval commandos and Mossad operatives made dozens of incursions into Syria. The operation only succeeded in bringing a few dozen young Jews to Israel. During a 10-year period in the 1980s, a collection of Jewish holy objects was smuggled out of Syria through the efforts of Chief Rabbi Avraham Hamra. The collection included nine Bible manuscripts, each between 700 and 900 years old, 40 Torah scrolls, and 32 decorative boxes where the Torahs were held. The items were taken to Israel and placed in the Jewish National and University Library of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. In 1975, President Hafez al Assad explained why he refused to allow Jewish emigration. I cannot let them go, because if I let them go, how can I stop the Soviet Union sending its Jews to Israel, where they will strengthen my enemy? As a result of mainly clandestine emigration, the Syrian Jewish population declined. In 1957, there were only 5,300 Jews left in Syria, out of an original population of 15,000 in 1947. In 1968, it was estimated that there were 4,000 Jews still in Syria. In November 1989, the Syrian government agreed to facilitate the emigration of 500 single Jewish women, who greatly outnumbered eligible Jewish men. During the 1991 Madrid Peace Conference, the United States pressured Syria to ease restriction on its Jewish population following heavy lobbying from Americans of Syrian Jewish descent. As a result, Syria lifted many restrictions on its Jewish community, and allowed Jews to leave on condition that they not immigrate to Israel. Beginning on the Passover holiday of 1992, 4,000 remaining members of the Damascus Jewish community Arabic Yehud Ash -Sham, as well as the Aleppo community and the Jews of Kamishli, were granted exit permits. Within a few months, thousands of Syrian Jews left for the United States, France or Turkey with the help of philanthropic leaders of the Syrian Jewish community. Some 300 remained in Syria, most of them elderly. Of the Syrian Jews who left for the United States, 1,262 were brought to Israel in a two year covert operation. Most of them settled in Tel Aviv, Holon, and Bat Yam. More than 2,400 others stayed in the U.S. and settled in New York. Israel initially kept the news of their emigration censored, fearing that it would imperil the rights of the remaining Syrian Jews to leave if they wished. After concluding that the Jews remaining wanted to stay and would not leave, Israeli authorities cleared the story for publication. The Jews who stayed in the United States initially faced many difficulties. To save face, President Assad had demanded that the departures not be called emigration, forcing the Jews to purchase round-trip tickets, and the United States agreed to officially admit them as tourists. As a result, they were granted political asylum and received temporary non-immigrant visas, rather than being admitted as refugees with a view to full citizenship. Therefore, they were unable to obtain U.S. citizenship or permanent residency, and thus could not leave the country, work in their chosen professions, obtain licenses, or apply for public assistance. In 2000, a bill was proposed in Congress that granted them citizenship. Topic 21st century Topic With the start of the 21st century, there was only a small, largely elderly community left in Syria. Jews were still officially banned from politics and government employment, and did not have military service obligations. Jews were also the only minority to have their religion mentioned on their passports and identification cards. Though they were occasionally subjected to violence by Palestinian protesters, the Syrian government took measures to protect them. There was a Jewish primary school for religious studies, and Hebrew was allowed to be taught in some schools. Every two or three months, a rabbi from Istanbul visited the community to oversee the preparation of kosher meat, which residents froze and used until his next visit. The community gradually shrank. From 2000 to 2010, 41 Syrian Jews made Aliyah to Israel. 
In 2005, the U.S. State Department estimated the Jewish population at 80 in its annual International Religious Freedom Report. As of December 2014, fewer than 50 Jews remained in the area due to increasing violence and war. In October 2015, with the threat of ISIS nearby, nearly all of the remaining Jews in Aleppo were rescued in a covert operation and moved to Ashkelon, Israel. It was estimated in November 2015 that only 18 Jews remain in Syria. Topic see also topic Aleppo Codex Bakashat Central Synagogue of Aleppo History of the Jews in Muslim Lands History of the Jews in Turkey Jewish Exodus from Arab and Muslim Lands Mizrahi Jews Musta Arabi Jews Pismanum Sephardi Jews Syrian Jews topic References topic topic Endnotes topic This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Singer, Isidore, et al., eds., 1901-1906. Syria. Jewish Encyclopedia. New York, Funk and Wagnalls Company. Bibliography AIDS, Abraham, Derek Eyre, T.Z., Ben A. Barak 1990 Ashtor, Toledo ha Yehudim b Mitzrayim ve Surya Tahat ha Shilton ha Mamliki History of the Jews of Egypt and Syria under the Mameluk Sultanate, Jerusalem 1944-51 Cohen Tawil, Abraham, Yahadu Halab Bur Ha Dorit, Al Ha Historia Ha Hebratit Tarbudit Shell Yahadu Halab Aram T. Soba Aleppo Jewry Through the Ages, on the Socio Cultural History of Aleppo Jewry, Tel Aviv 1993. Collins, Lydia, The Sephardim of Manchester, Pedigrees and Pioneers, Manchester 2006, ISBN 0 955 8. Harl, Yaren, by Safino Shell Esh la Ma'arab by Ships of Fire to the West, Changes in Syrian Jewry during the period of the Ottoman Reform 1840-1880 Hebrew. Harl, Yaren, Syrian Jewry in Transition, 1840-1880 English, largely a translation and expansion of the preceding Harl, Yaren, Cipher Air TZ, Ha Sifrit Ha Taranit Shel Hakmi Aram T Soba The Books of Aleppo, Torah Literature of the Rabbis of Aleppo, Jerusalem 1996 Summarized here Harl, Yaren, ed., Syrian Jewry, History, Culture and Identity, Ramat Gan 2015 Hebrew and English Laniado, David Sian, Le Kedoshim Asher Ba R T S, Jerusalem 1935 Second Edition 1980 Laniado, Samuel, Debish ve Ihalab al Leshwunch, Jerusalem 1998 9 Hebrew. Shamish, Y, Kahile Halab b Surya, Mahanayim 1967. Sutton, David, Aleppo, City of Scholars, Art Scroll 2005, ISBN 1 57819 056 8, partly based on Laniado, Le Kedoshim Asher Ba R. T. S. Zenner, Walter P. A Global Community, The Jews from Aleppo, Syria, Wayne State University Press 2000 ISBN 0-8143-2791-5 External links History, The Jews of Aleppo Ritual, Sephardic Pismanum Project Bible, Aleppo Codex website Synagogues, Robert Lyons, Silenced Sacred Spaces.